Flip and Steve here in the 302. That's for you, Spurs cards. 4 a.m. in the morning. Wonder why I'm doing up so late. Well, I work late. I just got off. I come home. It is Sunday night slash Monday morning. But eBay auctions have ended. PWCC auctions have ended. I work early tomorrow. People want their cards. So you know what? I got to come home. I got to print out my shipping labels. I got to get my packages. I only have maybe three, four packages going out. One of them was an Instagram deal that Kyler Murray's have sold. And we will talk about that. The whole process, how much I've made, what I put in, and the whole plan of buying them when I did and selling them when I did. The Richard Petty Jimmy Johnson, that one just sold on eBay tonight, 200 bucks. May have taken a small loss on that, maybe $25. Also sold a Kyler Murray Select Purple. I bought at Culture Collision for $100. Sold for $107. I'm going to net like $95. So again, another $5 loss with that card. Another card sold on eBay. But I highly doubt that the payer is going to pay. I'll show you that one. Did sell the two Kyler Murray Contenders, the BGS 9.5. True Gem Plus, the PSA 10, also sold the Select Tie-Dye. So anybody who's followed the channel for at least the last couple months knows that I've been buying Kyler Murray in the hopes that some hype would be generated around the NFL draft, around the Cardinals drafting a receiver, and that his market would move. Anybody who has paid attention to the market realizes that the market on his cards has moved. I spoke the other day in a video about how I didn't even want to have his cards when he hit the field, but that I wanted to sell on the news. Move the Kyler Murray cards. I'm gonna do a breakdown for you guys, give you some input on my strategies, how I was able to establish comps for cards that didn't necessarily have comps, because I had to fend off a lot of low ball offers and a lot of people referencing old comps. So uh, we'll go ahead and look at what I purchased. I purchased a Flawless off of PWCC. I purchased two Contender Optic Red tickets, tie-dye BGS-10. I purchased a Select Purple Prism at Atlanta Culture Collision. And I also bought a Downtown BGS-10 Pristine. So the Flawless was a super easy sell. In fact, you guys saw it in a video about a week, a week and a half ago. Flipped it for $8.75 on my slats. Yesterday, I made a deal for two of the Optic Contenders and the tie-dye select. At the same time, I had put my BGS Min Gem Optic Red Contenders uh, on eBay because I was having a hard time getting a comp for these cards. Comps were dating back to December of last year. I was having people telling me that a PSA 10 did 290 in December, telling me that a BGS 9.5 did 100 bucks in January. And my thing was his market has moved, but people were too stubborn to realize that. So I said, you know what, the hell with it. I'm going to put one on eBay and I am going to establish the new comp. I'm going to, whatever it sells for is going to establish the, the value of the cards that I'm holding. And that's just going to have to be the way that it is. I could not talk people into good deals. So I had to go that way about it. Meanwhile, yesterday, hours before my auction ends, I decided to move three cards, including two of the other two contenders, the True Gem Plus and the PSA 10 with the select tie dye on an Instagram deal. Here they are, sold on Instagram, in on these three for 1,100, cashed out for 15. Added 400 profit off those three. However, my eBay auction for the BGS Min Gem ended up going for $611. And yes, it was legit. It has already been paid and I've packaged it to ship. 9.5 Min Gem headed out on eBay. new legit comp on the BGS 9.5 of $600 plus, which I was into that card for 250 bucks. So I'm super happy with the flip on that individual card. But if I look back, maybe I pre uh, prematurely sold the other three prior to my auction ending and making 400 on those. In fact, we valued the PSA 10 at 600 and my BGS 9.5 Min Gem did over 600 on eBay. I'm gonna net 525 on that. It is what it is, I'll take the wins. I'm not gonna be upset about the losses. In fact, I'm happy for the person who got the cards from me because it gives them some meat on the bone to make some money and we'll continue to do some deals in the future. It's all said and done. I'm into the Kyler Murray's for $2,700. I have gotten back 2,995, 
which is $295 profit already in my pocket, and I still have the downtown, which means now the downtown is essentially a free card, and no matter if I sell it for a dollar, a thousand dollars, or two thousand dollars, I will be making profit and it'll be a win. That's what I like to do. I like to recoup my cost, hold a nice card or two if possible, and it makes it 100% profit. I did that with the Sam Darnolds. It took a lot longer. I had to wait a year, but with the Kyler Murrays, I started this mid-January, and here we are the first week of March, and the flip is already completed. Now I get to decide who I want to prospect on going forward. Is there anybody else I want to pick up? Do I want to take a stab or two at another... Uh, and another Kyler card, we'll see. I will always buy the deals. If there's deals out there, I'm gonna buy, but if I feel like the market's gone up and the window for opportunity has closed, I will back out and I'll try to find another window. With that being said, I am currently moving through a majority of my slab inventory, trying to get that stuff out, make my profits, make my flips. And for the uh, near future, I will be doing raw to graded, uh, just not a lot of speculation and prospecting going on. Certain windows have closed. Windows will open and I will prospect again. However, right now it's going to be the raw to graded on established players and a few more quarterbacks that I might be throwing darts at. But I do like to play the market multiple ways like that. Raw to graded as well as slabs and sell the slabs when the market moves on a player. It works. It has tended to work for me in the past. I would rather be lucky than good and I just feel like I've been pretty lucky. Money, 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 money. Money. I've had people ask me about the bubble wrap bags that I put my cards in before I mail them away. I buy this gigantic bag off of Amazon. No link, not affiliated, but they're the pouches. This is a 200 count bag and this might have cost me like 20 bucks. So makes it easy to ship your cards and not very expensive. This Herbert Firestorm Gold, grabbed this a couple weeks ago off my side for 100 bucks. Numbered out of 10. This BGS9, this is definitely a Joey Snapazoni candidate. So I'm going to go ahead and bust this one out. These subgrades got a 9.5 on surface, even in a PSA 9. Uh, for the grading fee of 20 bucks, a PSA 9 will be worth $20 more than the BGS9. And if it tends, hey, baby. Look this. Come on. I'm for this. Sales. Close the deal while out to lunch. Acquired on Instagram a CJ Stroud Leaf Rookies and Stars Thrillers insert red, numbered out in 99. Pretty cool looking card, got a nice price on it. And if it grades out in a PSA 10, will be a nice flip. Evaluating some raw cards for submission and something that I picked up on this card here I want to point out to you guys to make sure you don't miss when you're evaluating your cards the Surface on this card does look really clean. However, when you get it under a magnification You can see a fingerprint right here. If you look and I get a glare on it It's a fingerprint it's not a fingerprint of mine because I'm wearing gloves That's why I recommend that you guys wear gloves when you prep your cards or you'll leave your own fingerprints behind and you won't even know it But again, we'll get that fingerprint and we'll see if we can use a microfiber to get that off. There you go, very simple fix. Got some notification that a couple packages arrived. We'll grab this mail. Nice little stack of stuff. And you know, we'll keep this video rather short, wrap it up with a couple of these mail packages, probably not all of them. And also maybe hit Veriswap or PWCC, show you what I bought last night. The Cheetah fired up insert. This is numbered out of 35 and it is a cracked ice teal. So you got a color match and one of the most popular patterns in the hobby. It's actually trending the cracked ice. This was like a $7 pickup. I'll grade this out and definitely do well on this. The Firestorm insert. Again, these are case hits and people just don't know about them. And I think they're amazing looking. Do not go out and buy these. Save these for me. This one is in a Gem Mint 10. I already I bought it graded as is 150 bucks. Tom Brady in a case hit. That's an awesome looking card. 150 bucks, you can't beat that. And the Aaron Rodgers in a Jets uniform. Plates and patches, American metal. I love these American metal inserts. They're also case hits. Just the American flag behind the player. Very classic looking, cool card. Tough to grade because they're metallic and they scratch easily, but they do come with these 
protective covers that you will take these off before you send the grading. It doesn't affect the value of the card. In fact, that's what you want to do. It'll make the card pop more. Got in a couple of Patrick Mahomes numbered inserts as well, but we'll save those for another video. Go ahead and finish this video up over here on the Figgity Fee Bizzle. I'll show you a couple of cards that I picked up today. Um, identical cards here. Both of these cards are the same. Actually, I should probably bring up the photo of the other one. These are the Leaf Rookies and Stars Thrillers inserts. This is the Anthony Richardson Rookie Thrillers in white. They're numbered out of 149. I picked up two of these. As you can see, just buy it nows. They both look very clean in the scan. Centering looks good. I picked another one of these up the other day. These are the type of cards I talked about earlier in the video where I can grade these out and they will be really cool looking nice rookie cards of desirable players that are affordable. They have the serial numbering on them. The cards look good and they're the players that people are going to want. And then the old Aaron Rodgers case hits. You know, I'm on the Jets stuff right now. Just I believe the New York fan base is going to want something to buy come football season. This is the type of stuff that I'm going out and trying to beat the rush on. Uh, Aaron Rodgers case hit cards. This is the Metropolis out of Phoenix. These are very popular. The CJ Stroud sold for like 1100 bucks in a raw form. Just screams value to me. The thing I want to show you guys is an Aaron Rodgers card that I was watching on my watch list that ended. These are the Panini Absolute Explosive inserts. These have gained a lot of popularity because they're almost like the poor man's Kaboom, I believe. They're very similar to the design of the Kaboom. As you can see, the stuff just isn't that original anymore. Uh, the card does look pretty neat. I will give it that. Uh, the one thing about it is you can see up here, photos, one of one. There's only, not a one of one card. There's only one photo. So, you know, you want to look at the back on a card like this. If you're going to go paying out 76 bucks plus in an auction. I did message the seller for additional photos, and this is what they sent me. And this photo over here on the left, right here by the number nine, the whole line down here, I can't tell if that is the light slash glare. I can't tell if it is the soft sleeve or the card. So I just stayed away because I wasn't sure about the condition on this card. To me, because the photo was not listed and I had to ask for it, I'm going to guess that this might be some sort of defect on the card, but I'm not sure. You guys tell me what you think. Anyway, that's going to wrap the video. Thanks for uh, joining me for this afternoon. Wasn't a whole lot to show you. Flipping some Kyler Murrays, buying some budget cards, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Later. Say goodbye to Crazy Daisy. Crazy Daisy.